This might be a while. He can bark up to like an hour. So I might have to go take a nap or something. Oh, I think he's done. Okay. I am Shelby J and welcome to my lifestyle blog and today I want to talk about grief because um, I am going through grief and that is because on May 26th of this year my mother crossed over to heaven her body died to septic shock due to an infection that she had that she couldn't fight because she was going through stage 4 cancer so that was just a few weeks ago and I'm currently going through the grieving process. My mom was my best friend in the world uh, and in my opinion the only person who ever really like understood me and, and made me feel that I was really loved and accepted and seen and heard. So um, this is a dramatic change for me and was very traumatic and shocking and um, I've I have lost loved ones, but never someone this close and dear to me, so this is a completely new experience. In fact, it wasn't until after my mom passed that I even started filming these videos because I, I think it's kind of been a way for me to just keep myself busy and keep my mind focused on something and feel like I'm accomplishing something. And since I'm not spending my whole day with my mom anymore, I have to find other ways to kind of fill my time. And um, I've so far have found that this has really helped me. So um, this is where these videos, this is how all these videos even started, even though they have just started and they're still kind of rough. <laughs> so, um, but it's a process. And I just wanted to talk today about what my first three weeks going through grief has been like so far. And um, it's completely unexpected. It's not what I ever thought that it would be because I was so close to my mom and um, the year that we were aware that she had cancer I of course just always had the fear what if I lose her and I just thought that I, I could not live without her I thought that especially with my past experience with depression and anxiety that I would have just crumbled and I wouldn't have been able to cope I wouldn't have been able to like just even exist and I was very surprised at how I reacted and how life has been and I'm sure that there are a lot of people who have that same fear. Maybe you have a parent or a spouse or a loved one who's currently terminally ill, or maybe you just recently lost someone and you're kind of like, what is this going to be like? So um, I just kind of want to share some of it today. I'm sure that there will be a lot more to share in other videos, but I just kind of wanted to keep it brief and short and catch up on what the past three weeks have been like and like the main things that have been going on in my mind and in my life around me. I'm telling you guys, this fly is about to cross over into heaven and meet my mama here in a second because it is really making me angry. So just when I think that I got a hold on things and I'm doing better about my mom's passing, uh, something comes up like last night having a bad dream about her. So today I'm kind of feeling like a little bit bummed and um, I came to the park to walk around but more specifically uh my mom took me here a couple times and there was like somewhere over here where there was like a little kind of circular courtyard like hidden way back in the trees of the park and it had like a bunch of flowers and i think it had like a statue in the middle and whatever so i have no idea where it is but i'm going to walk around a little bit and try and see if i can find that little place that my mom took me um, she took me out there one day to take photographs um, when I was really into photography and she took me out there to take pictures of all the flowers so let's go try and find it so I've been very back and forth between diving deep into memories of my mother and trying very hard to completely push away all thoughts of her right now the back and forth is what's helping me actually and sometimes the thoughts are just too overwhelming and I start to spiral but on the other hand, I find peace watching her videos and it brings me comfort and gets rid of that kind of I miss her homesick feeling in my chest. I'm trying to find the perfect balance between not letting the grief overwhelm me, but not to push it away. And this has been kind of difficult for me. 
My instinct has always been to run away from my problems, and now for the past month, I've kind of run myself ragged because I'm trying to keep myself busy so I can run away from the thoughts. I have tried in the past week to be more mindful, and I've surrendered more to the thoughts, let myself cry when I need, and so far this has helped, and I kind of feel better with this new balance. Because of my own physical problems, I have found it difficult and near impossible to work a full-time job like any other person, so I am grateful that my parents have given me a home to live in, or else I would be homeless. And because I live at home, I have been close to my mom every single day. I've actually spent all day every day with her for basically my entire life, and in this way I felt much like a child losing their mother rather than a grown woman losing their mother. And as I told my dad the other night, I feel like I've been thrusted into womanhood even though I should have gotten here a long time ago since I'm 31 years old. But there's something about losing your mother that makes you feel like a child that needs to grow up right now and really fast. These sudden internal changes feel strange. I kind of feel like a plant that's been uprooted, taken to a new garden, and replanted. I know I can adjust and grow, but my surroundings are strange and I don't recognize anything around me. My comfort zone has been shifted and at first I was afraid I'd never feel comfortable again, but as the weeks have passed and I don't feel like I'm in crisis mode anymore, I've settled down and started adding the little things of my normal routine back into my life, like watching my favorite TV shows or listening to my headphones at night in the dark. Dark. It's these little things that at first slipped away for a while because everything was too tragic to do anything other than just survive, but now it's actually these little things that are helping me survive. Keeping myself busy is definitely a must, and I admit, I was kind of lazy before my mom passed away. I don't know what it is, but I'm much more motivated to do things now, and I've been pursuing more creative tasks. I've also been cleaning and organizing my space and getting outside to enjoy the view more often. Even though this little fur brother is a complete pain in the butt, he has been a help. He keeps me company during the day when I'm alone and I just want someone or something to talk to, and he's the one that gets me outside to enjoy the view. If it wasn't for him, I would probably be cooped up in the house way too much. Breathe here! Oh, good boy! Good boy! That was so good! Good boy! It was so good! It's your first time bringing it back! Good boy! You ready? Oh, you're doing so good! You're doing so good! Look at you! Look at you! Oh, and now you're gonna go back to... Okay, yep, okay. We're going to play tag now, huh? I used to go out nearly every day during the warmer months and walk around my property with my mom. And we'd look at the flowers, the pond, and watch the animals play. I still do this every day, but now I'm alone and it's a little weird. I find myself still talking to her and telling her about the flowers blooming and kind of just the little things like that. And I think that's okay. Whether she hears me or not, I don't know, but it helps me. Our family has been by each other's side as much as possible through this whole thing while still also kind of just getting on with our normal lives because we have to. If I could give any advice at all, I would say don't put your life on pause. Getting back to your normal routine will keep you sane. Or at least this is what I've seen for all of us, but everyone's journey is different and maybe you'll find it best to take a little break from things if you can. But honestly, I feel so heartbroken for anybody who has to go through grief alone and doesn't have anybody to lean on. Like sincerely, I just hope that if you are going through that, that you find friends or a support group or find your own family because it is just so helpful to have people around you that love you and can support you and talk to you and help you laugh and just get your mind out of the dark spaces. We hosted a Father's Day cookout and lit some fireworks and I had mixed feelings to be honest. We got together, talked about mom, shed a few tears, but we also all laughed and joked, and we set fire to some beautiful fireworks and I was happy, but also felt guilty for being happy and having fun. 
I find myself feel, feeling this guilt a lot for doing things I know my mother would enjoy and she would have loved seeing the fireworks and I ask myself, why didn't we do this kind of stuff when she was here with us? But mom is experiencing way more amazing things than fireworks right now and I have promised myself not to let any guilt or regrets take hold because they are the number one enemy of your life when dealing with grief. My mom wanted nothing more for me to be happy and peaceful. She told me all the time. It might sound strange to pursue those things most after she passed away, but knowing that's what she wanted so badly for me actually inspires me to seek it and find it. And I've learned from her, seeing her happy even on her most miserable days, and seeing her joyful and laughing through a year of painful cancer, that we choose to be happy. It isn't something we wait for to come along, which is how I was living my life prior to this whole situation. But there is one thing I'd like to warn people about. It's all the little difficult and technical responsibilities that come with losing a loved one. Like, I had to prepare a space to place her urn, packing away all of mom's little collectibles and toys so we could have a place in her bedroom to sit her was very difficult. And uh, there are other things like planning the funeral and writing a eulogy. Collecting the medical bills, canceling credit cards, changing passwords, which has been my dad's responsibility, but if you're losing a spouse or someone like that, then those are the things that you're going to have to do, and sometimes it can feel like you're erasing that person or packing them away in boxes, but there's really no way around it, and it's just the things that you have to do that come with losing a loved one. It also kicks up a need to clean out all of our clutter, or at least it did that to us. And when you're doing that, you run into a lot of memories throughout your house. So my cleaning quickly got derailed when I ran into a box of my mom's memorabilia and all of her little treasures. So I just had myself a nice cry fest. And, uh found things that she kept that I just never knew that she kept. Actually, the whole house will remind you of them because they are everywhere. The stuff that they picked out to decorate the house, the pictures on the walls, and even the little things like her toothbrush or her hairbrush or her perfume or her favorite cup sitting in the cabinet that she always drank her water out of. You are bombarded every single day with things that remind you of that person, even when you try to run from it. So she's also, um, this is kind of my first breakdown. It's a little itty bitty tiny flower. It says Shelby picked this for me April 2822. Like literally just a tiny little wild flower the size of a pea that I found in the backyard one day. It was like, it's they're usually like the first things to kind of bloom and grow in the spring around here are these little purple wildflowers. I picked one for her uh, last year. But all of this being said, um, this has been easier than I imagine as hard as it, as it is to say. There's almost a little bit of guilt that comes with saying that I'm handling her passing so well, but I have been and the first week was the hardest the anxiety and that feeling that yeah like she's gone and she won't be coming back that's like a really hard initial shock uh, but it starts to wear off and is kind of just replaced with just a sadness but actually I have found it relatively easy to just kind of get up in the morning feed myself bathe myself clean the house run my errands and kind of just get back to a normal life I just I really did not think that I would be able to function but I have all of these things are kind of interrupted by brief moments of just absolute heartbreak. Um, and then you cry a little bit and you think about her or them or whoever you lost and you get back to your normal routine. And that's kind of how it is. But I think that that's how God intended grief to be. And it's his grace and mercy that makes it that way. Grief is such a heavy and indescribable pain. Uh, and that's because love is the strongest thing to experience. So to be separated from something so strong and so true, um, that's like the greatest pain. So if we experience all this pain as one tremendous blow, it would just kill us and it would cripple us and it would leave us just unable to even survive. 
Um, and to some people it does because heartbreak syndrome is a real thing. It actually does happen to some people. But for us who are lucky enough to get through it and, uh, and to not be paralyzed by it, um, I think that our grief is kind of like a pressure valve and I like to describe it as just kind of a pot of boiling water inside of you and you kind of constantly feel that discomfort of that boiling water um, and then the steam will build and build and build and every now and then you just kind of have to release that valve, release the steam and then eventually over time the water will completely evaporate and it will be gone. It has only been a month and the pot is definitely still boiling. I have learned that grief is completely different for every person who experiences it, even in the same family that experienced the same loss. But the similarities that we have all experienced is we got through it easier than we expected. We are still able to continue our daily lives and responsibilities, and we are even able to have fun and laugh with each other. It didn't steal our joy and happiness, and in the big picture, that's what mom would have wanted. So maybe as I learn more about this process, I'll update you guys. But this is my story so far. Thanks for watching, and if you are experiencing grief right now, take it one breath at a time.